Pencil Kings, 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 Pencil Kings. I think the day that you think you've cracked it is the day that you're not going to be an artist. It is Wednesday, and we are back once again with the Pencil Kings podcast. Uh, before we dive into this, I want to give a shout out for the community. I've been talking with a lot of members, and the thing that they're loving most about Pencil Kings is the support that they're getting inside the community. So I just want to throw it out there that if you are struggling on your own, that there is you know, Pencil Kings is not the only community out there, but we have a great community. We have great events happening every month in different tracks. So depending on what you're interested in, we've got something for you and um, contests happening and workshops. So uh, go and, and check us out at PencilKings.com. Or if you know somebody who wants to get a little bit more serious about their art and, and looking to branch out and expand their network, uh, send them our way. We'd love to have them inside and, and start working with them. So today we are talking with Phil Galloway, from the UK. I feel like I need to, to throw that out there because uh, we're global. <laughs> we talk to people all over the world. And well, Phil, to start <laughs> off, why, why don't you give people just a one minute overview of the kind of work that you do and then we'll dive into some more in-depth questions. Yeah. Hi there, everyone. Uh, yeah, I'm mainly uh, digital portraiture, uh, contemporary portraiture in a kind of traditional way, I suppose, like real paint, um, ranging from celebrities through to private commissions. Um, and I use the Surface Pro 3 currently um, with just the standard t uh, stylus and mainly using the ArtRage desktop program to do the portraits. Ah, beautiful. Mm. I I don't hear of a, a lot of people using ArtRage. I know that they have a huge user base, but one of the things that I loved when I was playing with Art Rage, was just the 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 feel of everything. It just feels yeah. way more natural than in it Photoshop. Does. Like you, it, I mean, I, I'm not too experienced in in the drawing side of Photoshop, but when I used it, it kind of felt a little bit distant. That I had to, I did a stroke, and then I had to kind of almost add the effects to it. Whereas, where as soon as I tried um, Art Rage, it felt tactile. It felt, you know, the paint was malleable. It blended how. It you know it used to when I when I use oil paints and it just made sense to me and I mean I started off on fresh paint originally on you know Windows 8.1 and that's what got me into the digital art and that was beautiful to use and then obviously I tried Outrage and it just took it to another level then. Yeah, and I feel like it is it has a very shallow learning curve. Like you yeah. you get into it and you're like oh this is the paintbrush tool. Like it's very clear. It's, it's, it's not it's a, some obscure icon. Yeah, it's intuitive. I mean, no one showed me how to, how to have a go. I, I got the, uh, the app first, you know, it was a, it was a quid or two or 69 pence or something over here. And I just started messing about with it. And then it's basically how deep do you want to go into it? And, you know, then you can start tilting your brushes. You can, you know, dryness using kind of um, mixes. It, it, it's, you know, how far do you want to go down the, the, the digital rabbit hole, really? But if you just want to pick it up and just start doodling, I mean, my four-year-old daughter loves messing about on it and doing little paintings and little abstracts. And it's it's cracking for that kind of stuff. It's really good. That's awesome. And so just to dive back into your history a hmm. little bit, you're... Uh, relatively new, I guess, as a digital artist, correct? I am, yeah. I, I mean, I've come from a kind of fine art background. I, I'm a, I did my degree in history of art, um, and I've always been a fine artist, I suppose, uh, in, whilst doing other jobs. And everyone was telling me, you should be an artist, Phil. <laughs> what are you doing with yourself? Um, and eventually, I threw completely random. I changed my mobile phone. I was getting a little bit annoyed with the phone I was on and moaned about it on Twitter and uh, it was Lumia, Nokia Lumia got in touch and said, do you want to try our phone out? So I had a try of that. And it was there on the big uh, Lumia 1520, which had a big, lovely screen that I actually first had a go at digital paint, which was only about two and a half years ago and just fell in love with it straight away. I thought, oh, this, you know, this is a game changer for me. And from there, did a little bit more work with Microsoft and Lumia and got a Surface and it's just spiraled out. And to the point now that I've given up my other jobs, I am totally a freelance artist now. That's amazing. <laughs> no, it's crazy. <laughs> okay, I got, we got to dive into this story. Mm. So, so you, you, you were an oil painter before, correct? Or... Mainly, well, little bits. Mainly, 
the, the direction that kind of people wanted were, were mainly commissioning me was in um, fine pencil drawings. So loads of detail. Um, you know, I was drawing every kind of eyelash and hair kind of photo, realistic, chuck close kind of stuff. But it wasn't quite, you know, what I wanted to really do the way I saw things. And the reason when I started kind of doing little finger paintings on the phone and then on subsequently onto the surface, you can make a mess without making a mess. You know what I mean? If I got my oil paints mm. out at home, um, I, I run the risk of a small child running around or, the, or, or, or a dog running around with paint all over them all around the house and, and uh, my partner going crazy at me. Whereas on the digital side of things, it just made sense in my head that I could be a little bit freer. And so rather than be all tight, like my pencil stuff, it was a release. I could be very expressive with swathes of color and bonkers kind of brush strokes. And so my art has completely changed as well through being digital. It's loose and with every portrait that I do, it gets looser as well, which is quite interesting to kind of follow. It's, it's, I never thought I'd be, be saying that a year or two ago, so. And I, I just wanted to sort of set the stage that you were a very accomplished artist, like your skill level was very high before you moved to digital. So to, to say like, oh, I'm new to digital art and be like, what? Like you have these <laughs> results. I feel like you can progress very quickly. You can. Um, you but can. you had, there was a backstory. There was there. a backstory. I mean, I, I've studied art. I, I lived in Florence for a year, uh, for a year studying, you know, the, the masters and fine art. And so I kind of had the background um, and I've always drawn, always been drawing and, and trying to, you know, recreate, especially portraiture. I've always been interested in it. Um, so the background is there. Um, and so it was just a kind of case of transferring that to the digital side of things and seeing how initially it was to test it really I, I thought how close can I get this to real paint how close can I get this to a pencil sketch and the the results were just blew me away and I thought this is we're on to something here and then when I started printing them off and people were saying oh is this in oils or is this in acrylic then I knew yeah we've got something here I can <laughs> I can run with this very cool. So t let's let's go back because I think this is a, a really cool story. So you were, do you remember what you tweeted out about your phone where you were uh, when I was a moaning? Bit about... Yeah, I, I was. I I'd had a few beers and with, <laughs> I, and I was. I had an old iPhone four, and I was getting just a bit annoyed that I, at the time I didn't feel there was enough creativity on that platform. That it was everyone was kind of doing their iPhoneography and their photos and stuff. But on the art side of things, it felt very much you, you were consuming, not creating on the phone. And, and it was, it was annoying me. Uh, it was frustrating me. So I went on to Twitter and, and was, yeah, having a good old moan and, um, and was saying some rude stuff about it. And it was, I think someone in Ireland came back to me who was involved in a, a technology blog um, and said, Oh, have you tried uh, a Lumia? Uh, and it hadn't even crossed my mind to leave Apple at the time, you know, because I, I really enjoyed that phone. But it, by this stage, it had run its course. And um, so I hadn't. And, and Lumia Connects, which was the community side of um, of the Lumia business uh, company, it, they got in touch within a day or two. They must have seen the tweet and just said, we'll send you a phone out for two weeks to trial. And it was on that trial that I started doodling <laughs> on it <laughs> when I was at work when I shouldn't have been doing it. <laughs> So, but I, I'm I'm curious, like, why you? Or were you just? Do do you have a a, a ginormous Twitter following, or no, no, at the time, were you a celebrity, or is it just <laughs> really like genuine outreach? Genu to... It was genuine, and that's what kind of took me on the path to to go towards Microsoft and Lumia at the time was that that um, I tweeted a lot about you know iPhone stuff, and never once had a response from Apple. Um, or from from any company, really. I, it felt a little bit faceless. And, and I thought there's a lot of talent out here on Twitter, and they're not really getting, even if it, it's quite, you know, as, as you know, it's quite exciting to get a tweet from anyone, uh, but especially, a, you know, either a celebrity or a, or a big company, you know, saying just, you know, good job, well done. And and so they, they'd set up this Lumia Connect side of things, which is their community things, and they were brilliant. And, and you can ask any kind of of the, the kind of followers of them on Twitter, they are a, a, a family of supporters, I suppose. They are ardent, you know what I mean? I wouldn't even call them fanboys. They'd pass that. They are, you know. <laughs> and it, it, it was, they really supported us and, or, and championed their brand without, you know, ramming it down your throat. So they just said to me, look, you know, we've got a good product. Do you want to try it for two weeks? We'll send you one completely free of charge. If you don't like it, you can write, you know, you don't like it and, and send it back to us. 
Uh, and that was it. And it, so it wasn't really that I was anyone. I, I think at the time I only had about 300 followers and most of them were family and cousins. So, <laughs> well, well, that's, that's amazing. Like I'm, I've, I've heard that the Microsoft phones are awesome. I have one friend who works at Microsoft and has a Microsoft phone. But other than that, I only see them in television shows. Yeah, well, that's, and so it's, yeah. And I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I've, I've switched phones now. I, I had that phone for, for two years. I've, I've switched just because um, there was a few apps it was missing, which is always the gripe with, with that side of things. Um, so I, I'm currently on a, on a Samsung at the moment, which is a brilliant phone, but I'm not really using it to paint on or to draw on. But it's uh, it was it was a good time and 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 it it got me involved with their community side of things. So they started asking me to to when they saw the drawings that I was doing on the phone um, to kind of write you know top tips for them for their blogs and and did, doing little interviews. And then they held a competition, a digital art competition, which I uh, which I won, uh, and I won a, another <laughs> Lumia phone, which my girlfriend proceeded to break, <laughs> uh, and. And it just went from there. And so I started doing a little bit more work here and there with Microsoft um, to the point that they knew that I was trying to save up money to, to buy a Surface Pro 3. Um, mm-hmm. And unbelievable. I mean, it was so exciting. They, they, they got in touch with me a couple of months before Christmas and the team there. And I got to know them all, you know, first names. They were really friendly by this stage, really helpful. Anything, I, you know, I... I kind of needed support on. They were there, and and they asked me to to start in a little viral campaign, a video that they were filming in London just before Christmas, um, and it was meant to be with Roz, uh, Roz Hall as well, but unfortunately he couldn't do it at the time, so it was just left to me. So I was, it was a bit nerve wracking. So we filmed a a viral campaign, and then they very kindly, after that, um, donated for, as a Christmas present a Surface Pro Three, and that's you know. I could then start producing work that was saleable, not just kind of look nice on Twitter, which I could actually then sell as prints because of the quality was so much higher using the tablet. So it was, oh, a, it was a crazy time. Yeah, it was good. It, it all happened quite fast, but it, you know, it, it has that six month period, seven month period has completely transformed my life. You know, to, to now say that I'm a freelance artist wouldn't have happened if I hadn't have had a moan about that phone that night. <laughs> Wow! Yeah, it just it it, you can moment. tie it back to that one tweet. <laughs> I know, I know. I might aim it up. <laughs> well, it's something that we've started to see as a, as a trend now. Is people um, there's you know it's very noisy when you're on Twitter and, and you're posting your artwork or whatever but when you can find a sub niche and be the guy you know the guy that wins the art competition like I don't know how many people uh, were in that competition but I'm sure that it was it's far less than than some like general calls to art that a lot of people are scrambling to try and get seen at and it's it's not to um, diminish the quality of your art because it's amazing but it's just it's like showing people the power that that's in these yeah. smaller groups of finding like Microsoft phone users and and all the opportunities that can come from there that you don't know what it's going to be when you start out, but you could go and compete on, you know, like a DeviantArt or something like that. Yeah. And they, it's just like so huge. Or you can go to these smaller communities, still do amazing work and then um, really stand out and, and great things start to happen. Well, that's I it, love exactly. It. I think I think you've just got to what I found with, with with particularly on the Twitter side. I mean, I love Twitter. It's just just to try and be involved in as much as you can always be, you know, pleasant, nice. It goes without saying. But just, you know, try and be involved in as much. And, and if there's competitions, if there's, you know, if people need advice, just be there. And, and, and it, like you say, the smaller groups are, are so kind of helpful. Um, it's blown me away. I, you know, whatever platform I've been on or been using, it's been, it's been unbelievable for me. It's a, it's a great thing. <laughs> All right, I want to change gears a little bit and talk about your process of using ArtRage because I feel that it's something that doesn't get a, a spotlight shone on it enough. I know with with you're the first person I believe that I've talked to on the, this podcast <laughs> who's using ArtRage as their predominant art tool. No. I love that you're using it in a more fine art capacity and not um, entertainment design. So I think that's really cool as well. Yeah. So. Uh, like you talked a little bit about how you're just kind of mucking about and you're like, wow, I can get the, the same results that uh, or similar results that I was getting with oil painting, but without all the mess. Yeah. And I love that. Um, 
where do I even start here? So I'm looking <laughs> at, I'm looking at on your website, uh, dis, which is philgallowaydraws.co.uk, and there's one called December Digital Portraits, and it's a blue. Yes. They, there's that, a there's a there's a whole series of them. They but I'm looking were done at the first on uh, they were done on using fresh paint. Actually, those ones, the December series. Okay. So both apps are re- really good. The 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 one downside with fresh paint um, would be that it's just the file size just doesn't go big enough, and and you, because you don't have layers, it you know you can't really build it up too much. And what I was finding the reason why I switched to Artrage is that you can on Artrage you can set if I was doing a, you know, a 16 by 19 inch portraits, you can put those parameters in and work exactly to that. Whereas on 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 fresh paint, once it went over a certain size, you were a little bit limited. And it still looked really good. I mean, I blew some some of those up, those ones from December up on canvases, and they they look fantastic. But Art Rage, you can, you know, I mean, you could do it the size of a jumbo jet, and it would still not, you know, it might cause your surface to crash a few times because it's such a big file. But it, it it's it you know it can handle pretty much anything. Okay, well let's look at then is uh, there's a close up here um, Bert work in progress. Yes. So that, is that done on that's Outrage? A, that's on Outrage, yeah. So that was a commission um, for um, a gentleman for his um, for his girlfriend or wife, I think it's his girlfriend. Um, uh, her granddad had died and that's that's Bert and so she wanted a portrait of him for her house and so they got in touch and uh, and he it, it, he's had such a kind of characterful face you know I wanted to try and convey that and and used art that was one of the early ones that I switched to art rage on to use that was one of the earliest ones when I'd made the switch from fresh paint to art rage okay so f- for people listening because this is an audio only podcast just to explain what I'm looking at we'll have this at pencilkings.com slash podcast so you can look at it there if you want to while you're listening but uh, it's like the the paint strokes really show up and, and by this I mean like there's just a texture to them there's a depth to them as well it looks like there's yeah. like it's lit so there's a sh- shadow on it which is really cool but can you explain your process like are you is it the same way that you would approach oil painting? And I guess it's a very personal thing too. I guess everyone has their own process. Yeah. Some people don't like to talk about it, but I'm just curious for somebody who wanted to, who looked at this and, and was inspired and then said, okay, I'm going to give Art Rage a shot. I believe they've they've got like an advanced version now, but they still have like a lower version they that you can indeed, still yeah. do amazing stuff with the, the, the lower version. So I, I'm a, a big advocate of just starting simple and then if you really love it, then totally. go, you know, and, and I believe then buy the Ferrari. A few, a few, exactly. And a few people I know who have iPad Pros and iPads have been using the Art Rage on that and saying it's absolutely brilliant. Um, and it, you can you've got all the layers and everything on 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 just the app version as well. So it's definitely worth giving it, like you say, a test drive and and a go. Um, but no, my my process usually is kind of the same for each one. Um, so what I would do is obviously you put in what size picture it's going to be. Um, now, this is the downfall, I suppose, of all um, painting apps is that, that if you choose a a huge picture, so say you know a two size uh well not huge but you know pretty big the brush strokes don't go too big on it but um but aside from that so what i would do is i'd set the kind of parameters of of what size canvas i was working on and usually i'd select a a color for the background now that can completely influence how every color that subsequently goes on top you know in in, interplays with each other so on, on on i think on bert i'd use like a light gray for the background, which quite is quite because he had quite pink skin and pink often goes well on top of light gray. Um, and again, these are little things that I kind of picked up from doing my oil paintings and my, my, my paintings, acrylics and stuff from, from when I was younger, that if you do a wash in the background, it you know affects how you know the skin sits on it, on top of it. Um, so that's what I do. I choose a color for the background and then just start sketching it out using the pencil tool just in, in black um, and sketching the face out you know, roughly where, I, you know, not worried about too much detail initially. And I don't, I suppose a lot of people would be listening to this going, oh, no, he's, he's crazy. Because I don't, I don't really use many layers in digital art as well. I try and do it on as, as few as possible. 
Um, and I've seen some amazing artists work and some of their videos. And I, I did a show a little while ago with someone who I'm watching him work and he used about 30 layers in the space of five minutes, whereas I use one pretty much throughout the whole thing. So what I do is I do the sketch um, uh, in the pencil and roughly um, with a dry brush, because on Art Rage you can set how much paint is loaded onto the brush. Um, so I'd turn the loading right, right down um, so it's barely, you know, scratching the surface and just start kind of feathering in block blocks of color and, and um, usually using quite strange colors. So my, my mum and dad sometimes watch me paint and, and my dad has been and he thinks I'm nuts for using green on blue on faces and things like that. But then at the end of it, he goes, oh, it works. How did you do that? You know, <laughs> so, and so so I'd get the kind of like I said, the blocking in the colors, leaving a little bit of the gray to come through because that adds usually or whatever color you've you've got in the background. I've just done a portrait um, last week where I used a, a bright neon orange background because I wanted it to kind of really look modern and poppy. Um, and it, whatever color you have at the background, when it shines through, it adds a little bit of luminosity to it and kind of makes it sing a little bit more. And at that stage, when you've got your blocks in colors, it, it tends to look a little bit pale. And that's usually at the stage where I'm, you know, annoyed with it and going, oh, this isn't working. But when you start adding a little bit more paint to the brush, so just creep up your loading a little bit more, that's when you see you were talking about it looks like it's lit, you know, the paint is lit. That's when you start seeing the lines and the strokes come in. You can start building up then with a bit of stronger colours. So I move from then the pastel colours into your darker reds and your greys and your burgundies and dark blues. And then that's when it starts getting that 3D feel and, and and go from there. And then there's a little trick as well sometimes that if I did a portrait of Lucy and Freud, it's on my website, and that was quite flat colour, and I, I was a bit annoyed with it. And um, and so what I did was you can – it's one of the only times I really do use layers. You can put a layer behind it and just use swirly brush strokes like round the eye socket and round the nose. And because it's underneath the other one, it, it makes the paint on top of it bulge as if it's got strokes within it. So you can add texture even though the paint's not showing, it's quite a clever little little trick, <laughs> which makes it look even more 3D, so you can build it up from underneath. Um, and recently I've started, although I'm not on that Burt photo uh, painting, I've started using the, the palette knife an awful lot as well, where you can just squirt the paint straight onto the canvas and start pushing it about. And I like leaving it chunky and rush, r uh, rough at the moment. So on my kind of newer work, again, it's already evolved a bit since the Burt painting is getting looser and more textural, you know, all the time. So that's how it would start, you know, just start really simple and just build it up and build it up as if you were using real paint. And I did a, I did a talk at Microsoft a little while ago. Uh, I was fortunate enough at Microsoft House in London to, to give a little talk about my, my work. And, and people were asking about layers and about digital art because a lot of digital art, you can see that it's digital and it's, it's unbelievably good. And I would never knock anyone's art because it, it's fantastic. And I couldn't do it. It's not the way I work. And I just, I said, you know, they asked, why do I do it the way I do? And I just said, well, you, you know, the only layers you have on, on a canvas or on a piece of paper is the layers that you build up, not, you know, you don't put extra paper in. And, and so the way my head works is just to keep layering and laying until you get the texture and the tones that you're happy with. Oh, that makes sense. And I've seen people work both ways. I feel like it's a, it's a personal preference. But, totally, uh, yeah, and whatever works. I mean, I would, like I said, I'm I'm learning little bits of people all the time, and hopefully, you know that you know some people ask on Twitter, how did you get that effect? How did hopefully I can <laughs> pass on a little bit as well. And um, it's it's what like you say, it's whatever works really. And some of the people I've seen use Outrage from manga through to, I mean, there's people who've been recreating, you know, Dutch masters right the way through to kind of urban dystopic kind of dystopian scenes from from the future and it's all using the same brushes it all using the same paints and they are all creating unbelievably different paintings so it's it's vast what you can do with it yeah amazing and i'm just looking at art rage uh, art rage's website as we're talking here and i think it's like 50 dollars to for the for the uh, for the desktop art program Ford. yeah it's uh, and that's the full one where you can print up to whatever size you can have as many layers as you want there's a few more tools on there um than the the app but like i said i mean i was i was using the app for a good couple of months um and it was serving me absolutely fine and that was 
however much I think it was was it one ninety nine or something over here or sixty nine pence I can't remember how much it was on on the on the surface but it it was nothing um, and it, it was brilliant and you know I was hooked straight away. And is that Art Rage Light or, or yeah do, I think on the Windows the one for- yeah I think on the Windows one it's called Art Rage Light um, and then on on Apple and Android I'm, I'm, I think it's I think it is I see, just called I see Art Rage for iPad. Yeah, that's yeah. that one. Ah, very cool. So it's it's definitely worth checking out. That, yeah, and they're they're very keen at kind of championing their community as well. That when you kind of tag Art Rage into it, um, they'll you know they'll send it out to their followers and any questions and stuff. They're really keen, you know, to get back to you dead quick. They're trying to grow their community, and it's good. It's um, like I said, it's nice to see what different artists are doing with it. Um, and there's some some of them. I'm like, I'm like, oh god, I've got a lot to learn. <laughs> I need to I need to up my game, and uh, it's good. It's good for that. Well, I guess that that's a a nice jump off point. Um, wanting to up your game because I know that art is one of those things that you're never you never really master it. No, you. You die knowing that you there's more to learn and that you could have improved. And I'm curious because I, I've talked to a lot of people and I see them feeling like they need to be a master of everything before they can do the thing that they really want. So before they can apply for that job or before they can send their portfolio to anybody or before they can post their work online, they need to be an absolute master of everything and draw it straight out of their imagination yeah. uh, with no reference. And, you know, for somebody like you, that's, you're, you're well established and, um, you're continuing to evolve your style. Do you feel that same kind of pressure? Do you, I, like, I I think it's ridiculous, but, um, I, I felt it before though, when I was starting out. And so for you is, is continuing to grow and evolve. What do you feel in terms of like how you, um, develop your skills? Is it just haphazardly, you know, you, you try out a new tool and you just see how it works? Or are you consciously feeling like, oh, I need to work on certain specific things and there's you're, a, you I go suppose, intently into to studying a, it? Yeah, I suppose across the board, there's a few things I kind of, with each painting I'm looking, I look at after it's finished and, I, and I'm, I'm happy with each one. And I kind of think, right, you know, I, I want more, I, I knew I wanted more texture in my paintings a couple of months back and and so I wanted to just experiment uh, and just kind of which like you say that there is pressure when when you know that especially when you've gone freelance that you know your time when you're working is, is, a, is a kind of precious commodity you, uh, there's the there's the added pressure that you feel that everything you do should be earning you money so if you're drawing doing some like a, a drawing it should be saleable as a print you know so if you do a picture I don't know of, of a celebrity is it gonna sell and and that's a silly way to work, really. And and it, it, I've tried to get out of that habit because the freer you are and the less you're thinking about that, the the, the better the work is, the more expressive it is. And so I was thinking about texture, um, and so sat down for an afternoon when I really should have been getting on with a commission, but I knew that I needed to kind of get over this hurdle if I wanted to kind of make the commission a little bit better, and just sat down and, and did a painting of uh, Francis Bacon, very very loosely. With you know, the, I think there was only four colours in the whole thing, and I used palette knife pretty much most of the way through it, and it felt a little bit alien to me. But by the end of it, I thought I've taken another step on here. This feels a bit more like what's in my head. The way I, and and my girlfriend came in and she said she said yeah, you know you've cracked it. This is <laughs> this is it. This is where you because she knows she's known that I've been kind of striving to kind of get what's in my head down and not just be like dead tight like my pencil drawings to be looser digitally and so she said yeah this this is where you're at this is this is this is this is good go with that go with that and <laughs> less is more because oh, it's quite it's quite annoying actually just to let you know we're we're both art historians in this house uh, and i'm i come from the school of liking renaissance and baroque and fine art like this and and she comes from the modern art who likes tracy emin and <laughs> so we dinner dinners and conversations are <laughs> Are heated <laughs> sometimes on our <laughs> on, on where we come from out, but she's a great influence because it's ha- she's actually how really helped in pushing me on to kind of learn new stuff. Um, but there is, like you say, there is there is a pressure um, to kind of feel. I suppose a lot of people, I think, on Twitter feel that they have to kind of maybe conform to something that everyone's drawing pictures of Batman, so I'm going to do pictures of Batman, 
And it's kind of like, just do what your own, do your own thing. You know, the, the best artists in the world, the, the fine artists, don't do what everyone else is doing. If someone wants to paint crazy pictures with eyes all over the place, go for it. You know, eventually, if, if it's good enough, people will start taking notes. Um, and so I, I was torn initially early on from always wanting to kind of each piece to count to make money. And it was getting, I was getting bogged down with it and I was losing a little bit of kind of inspiration. So as soon as I started freeing up and loosening up, commissions started coming in because they wanted that style. They wanted the looser style. You see what I mean? So I think it's good to experiment and just not to kind of feel the burn of, of trying to do something, you know, when, and like you say, people rush into things thinking I've got this and, and no one is a master of any of it. You know, even there's some people on Twitter that I kind of go, Oh, they've got it. They, they've, they know exactly what they're doing. There's a a lad I, I follow who does these, futuristic robot landscapes and they're unbelievable but he's very kind of succinct and 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 kind of honest and he's saying he's still learning and he looks at other people's artists and he feels bad about his art that day so you know i don't think i think the day that you think you've cracked it is the day that you're not going to be an artist All right. Well, I have one more question. I'm really, uh, I really love talking to you because we, like I was saying before, Sorry if I'm we have, <laughs> oh no, not at all though. This is great. And we haven't had a lot of fine artists on here, especially people who, um, I, I don't know. It just seems like you're, you're just coming through your voice. You're very upbeat. You're very happy. Uh, and, and I love that. I, I, we have had some stories of how difficult it is to be a fine artist. Um, and so the last thing that I'm curious about is how much time you're putting into some of these paintings because I feel like that's another misconception that you see these pictures and you're just like, oh, man, that looks amazing. And then you sit down to do it yourself and you give up after half an hour. Yeah. But the reality is that, you know, like, there's all that like we talked about the backstory of all the the hours that you put in. But when you actually sit down to do one of these, and I'm sure they vary because the, the, there's different styles that you're doing. Yeah. Um, but what would you say as an average when you when somebody hires you for a commission? Is it uh, do the, does the client dictate it? Do you dictate it? And, and what does it actually look like in terms of time spent at the computer? And initially, I mean, there's the, like you say, there's the preamble. There's the kind of walk up to the computer, if you will, whereby you are discussing exactly what the client wants. Now, I try and get as much detail as I can first because there's nothing worse than getting three quarters way through a painting to have it changed (laughs) Uh, because it's, although it, it's not real paint and you can paint over it and everything, it takes a long time. Um, And, you know, a few of the paintings I've worked on in the past, um, I've worked on what the client has said and bless them. You know, they've decided, no, I don't want that color. Or can you just add this person in, you know, and things like that. And so the best thing to do is to kind of get as much knowledge as you can and get as many, photos or references or whatever the you know of the subject you can get so you get a feel for sketching that person of what they're kind of like you know and their kind of skin colors vibrancy all that kind of stuff because I, I i use quite unusual colors as much as i can to to try and get their character so i'll find out a little bit about them i've just done a, a portrait of someone's father over in san francisco and so i wanted to know a little bit more about their character and you know that it was a black and white photo which is interesting to work from so i wanted to know where they lived, did they have a suntan, was it, you know what I mean, all these kind of details, um, right down to the kind of minutia of it. So then, and then once that's kind of gone and I'm getting kind of stylist to screen stage, um, it can, it depends. If it's a looser style, I can get through them quite quickly. And usually if I'm, if it's not on a commission base, you know, a couple of hours, I can get something that I'm quite happy. And if, if I'm just working off something that you know, that I've initiated myself. I usually take a lot longer on the commission ones because I feel I want to get them right for the customer. You know what I mean? So some of them come quite easily. The initial drawing of the person can be some of the toughest stages. You know what I mean? Because you can get bits right and then other bits wrong. And sometimes it's only when you start painting on top of it that you realize perspectives out a little bit or some, you know, the eye's not quite in the right position. So I'll take quite a, you know, bit of time getting that sketch right and then like 
one of the commissions I did for a magazine, like you say, there's a few different styles on my website because people have asked for it. So I, I did a football front cover and they wanted it in the style of Caravaggio, a Baroque you know, painting. And I thought, oh, this is a bit of a challenge for digital art to try and do that. And so I, I took it on and it was for a front cover of a magazine. It was I'm big into football and soccer and stuff. So I thought I'll give it a go. And it, it took days upon days upon days to get it. Right, with numerous changes, numerous, you know what I mean? But on average, it's hard to say because usually I don't get, you know, most people will work a couple of hours at a time and then come back to it maybe in the evening. Because I work from home um, and usually I've got two little kids running around, I might get 40 minutes here, <laughs> stop, go and do something <laughs> with the kids or you know, <laughs> pick them up off the floor and they've just banged their head um, and then come back to it. So it's a bit stop starty, but anywhere from, you know, four or five hours through to, you know, 10, 11, 12 <laughs> on some of the bigger ones that have taken ages. Um, but I, I, the main aim is basically work until if it's a, if it's a, for a client, keep them in the loop. I keep emailing progress where we're up to, are they happy? You know what I mean? And then that will save you time in the long run, you know, but it does depend. <laughs> Some of them, I wish they were a little bit quicker. Ah, I think that, that gives a, a good ballpark. I know when I've sat yeah. down that after an hour, I get frustrated. And I'm just like, oh. See, I get into the zone. Can't I mean, this I'll happen get, faster? I'll, I'll, yeah, well, sometimes I do. And, and some, I know when I'm kind of, when, when things are kind of going right, sometimes you just fall really lucky on, on a painting and it just happens. And, you know, two, three hours, you've got something that's pretty much workable, you know, to, to kind of get, get to print. Um, you know, and especially I get the tunes on. If the if if the family are out of the house, I can crank up the music behind me, and if I get in the zone, you know, I get a lot more done in three hours than I maybe would do in six hours of broken work. You know, where everyone's home, so it it really depends on kind of what mood I'm in as well. And I'm a I'm a big kind of sometimes a you know a procrastinator. I'll walk around and I'll mull things over and I'll then maybe go outside and do some work in charcoal just to loosen up or just to take my mind off the screen, you know, for a little bit, just, just things like that. So it can, <laughs> it totally depends really. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm working on a, a, a an Abraham Lincoln portrait is going to be my next one. So keep an eye out for that one. Um, I've just been commissioned to do that. So, uh, you know, I've been getting reference images and starting the sketch of that. So I'm hopeful that that will only, you know, shouldn't take vast amounts of time, but we'll see. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing your knowledge and, and being basically an open book and, and telling us about how no you work. No problem and, at all. I, you know, I hope it helps. <laughs> oh, yeah. De no, definitely. I've, I feel inspired to um, find the Art Rage app and give that a shot because I've been, you know, most of my work was in Photoshop and then I started using Clip Studio Paint, which was it's it's been fun and, and I feel like a real blessing. It's really nice to use. Yeah, uh, but I haven't gone back to Art Rage since I've got a Surface. So, um, yeah, I mean, I still I, 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 got, I got Manga Studio uh, and I've used that a few times and I like I really like it and I think for kind of more graphic-y stuff I might use that. But if for me, you know, like you say, with, with my my kind of background of using paint and the way it works and reacts with each other, uh, I just I've not found anything that kind of comes close. To to and, and I mean to art rage and there's there's unbelievable programs out there and some people are making you know really cool brushes for for Photoshop you know there's Friend and Kyle Webster and all these ones and they're lovely and 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 the effects is so good but I think the application actual using it art rage just for me you know it, I could be in front of a canvas with a brush just you know dunking it into the pot and I'm going you know. And that's the way it feels. So, but I think my main thing really would to just be to, to everyone, you know, have a go of as much as you can. Try everything, and you'll find what fits with you. You know, I, I'll never slag off or slate a, a company or a brand or, or or a program because each of them work for someone. You know what I mean? So just give it a go. Yeah. All right, Phil. Thank you so much. Thank I really you very appreciate much. It. No problem at all. And uh, I just want to give a shout out here. So there's Phil Galloway draws.co.uk that's right and uh, we'll have links to that and Phil's Twitter and other social media properties when we post this at pencilkings.com slash podcast so thanks for listening and thanks again Phil thank you very much cheers
demands patience, skill, years of practice. Ah, you talk like a fool. I would trade a century of practice for an ounce of inspiration.